first job needs to get done tonight. My second job's gig work can wait. After 30 years of driving truck, now that I'm just a local driver, I end up doing a lot of side little jobs with the company as uh, I'm getting ready to do now. I'm driving someone else's truck because mine is parked over there. I'm driving someone else's truck, picking up an empty trailer, taking it down to Lake Alfred, Florida, then dropping this stuff off, hopping in someone else's truck, hooking to another trailer and bringing it back. That's just my day. Tomorrow, God willing and the creeks don't rise, doing a little bit of Uber and Lyft. Well, that did not take too long. I am now home at camp. Look at those Nissan headlights. So how many of you guys are afraid to travel with your Chatamo vehicle? Just leave in the comments below. What's the longest distance you've ever done in your Nissan Leaf? tell you at the moment mine is about 1,000 mile a quick 1,000 mile trip that's getting ready to change in about 30 more days though I am doing a 1,000 1,600 mile trip round trip that's gonna be scary and exciting I just need one thing to start working before um, I even attempt this and so far the thing I need to start working has only worked once That's right, it's not the truck passing me and going down the wrong road. It's this adapter. I've had it working one time at one ABB unit that was a EV Go. But since that one time, nada. I have tried it at other units, other ABB units actually thinking it was going to work at all the ABB because it worked at that one. Nope, it hasn't. I've tried it at 7-Elevens now, and 7-Elevens have their own ABB units, and I could not get it to work. And I did that the other day. So I did contact the company that creates these things, and they said there's something with the U.S. something software that they're having a hard time making um, firmware for. Where the rest of the world it's pretty easy but here in the united states for some reason we're the difficult ones as usual but they said don't worry please keep the faith we have great people working on it and hopefully something soon will come it's a little bit scary because the unit was 1050 bucks and i've only gotten it to work one time in about two months and i don't think i could send it back i i'm trying to keep the faith and keep the hope that we're going to get it working here and uh, and all this worry is for naught because one day I'm going to pull up with new firmware and it's just going to work. I would like it to work before June, but I doubt that's going to happen. So I'm going to rely on the network the United States does have at the moment. Man, I wish we were like Europe in some ways. You guys look at what's charging beside me. It's not an Amazon van, but it is a... A work van? That is sweet. Not just major corporations are getting those and that looks like it's a what kind of what kind that's not a Rivian. So this was only 47. Look at that. And there's plenty of room in it. So you like if you wanted to turn in this into a motorhome, you could put a, a kitchen, a bathroom. Yeah, it's open, that's open. Whoa. But it only gets 130 miles. Yeah. That's not. But it's okay. My my guy is, you know, it's the yeah, air, Orlando, Comfort. What size battery does it have? Huh? What, how big's the battery? I don't know. Oh, you don't even know. <laughs> I wow. think it's big. But you got a lot of weight in there too, so yeah. you got a lot of equipment. This is nice. And it's not a Rivian. I thought it was at first, but it is a Ford. Wow, that, that's a, it was a pleasure meeting you. This is nice. And it's paying itself off because it's your work vehicle. Huh? 
It's your work vehicle. That's what mine doing. I got Uber, Lyft, and everything. This is a. It's a Leaf, yeah. Yeah, it's like a. I put it to work too. Might as well let it make the payments. How many, how many miles? Uh, right now, I'm up to 50. This is my second one. So it's it's. I had a 2013. I gave to my son, and then I got this one. So that's. It only and and this only gets 233, but it's not much. But it works. Yeah, so that's a Ford. What 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 kind is it? So it's a Ford. Ford Transit. Ford Transit EV. Yeah, 350. Wow. Yeah, that's nice. Oh, that was kind of cool. A Ford work van. I, I kind of like that. I guess people, he said the people in Europe have it everywhere. There's only like 100 of them here in the United States. Because Rivian pretty much controls that market. But that is uh, sweet. Yeah, it's crazy trying to do long trips unless you drive one of these things. For some reason, I've never suffered from range anxiety though. I've gone all the way down to South Florida. Heck, I went to the Florida Keys and never suffered range anxiety. I just knew that everything was gonna work until it started not working. Once they started pulling Chatamo from all the chargers and focusing on just one standard, life slowly changed. Bark side of the moon. I thought the all the equipment for the charging units was right there. It's not though. I think it's over there because across that little pond. Oh yeah, it looks like those are all the units. The chargers right here. And a lot of power going over here. Assuming that's why it's that far away, so we don't have to hear it. But most chargers are really quiet. I mean, the equipment's really quiet. Sometimes the chargers themselves will fire up an audible fan noise. Well, I think it's about time for me to unplug and go ahead and move on down the road. I'm at 78%. That's more than enough. Let's end today's charge. Back in the days when I was driving gasoline vehicles, or petrol, petrol, I never stopped and talked to the people, other people beside me charge, or not charging, but filling up their gas tanks. But it does seem there is a camaraderie, camarader, camarader, whatever the word is, camaraderie? Where's my thesaurus when I need it? That's why I don't speak too many other languages. I can barely pronounce English. But there's something between EV owners and EV drivers compared to gas drivers where we all communicate and talk. And it's kind of cool. On the comment section and some of the videos go, why did you buy a Nissan Leaf? Knowing that it has this problem with the Chatamo, that eventually it's going to be non-existent. And why didn't you get like a Chevy Bolt or a Tesla or well, there wasn't really a BMW i3, I guess. Uh, why, why didn't you get one of those cars? Well, they, they never said BMW i3. That's just one of the cars I wanted back in the day. I'm an early adopter. Nissan Leaf was the very first mass-produced EV. Then Tesla came out, and then it was Tesla and Nissan for the longest time. And then all of a sudden, Chevy came out with a Bolt, and other cars started coming out. And uh, Chatamo was one of the main ways of charging. Over the years, obviously, things changed, but when you become, an, when you're an early adopter, you don't realize that whatever choice you made is going to be the wrong choice, or you think it's always going to be around. Much like when we had Google Glass. I was an early adopter, got my Google Glasses, and it worked great. They were, they're awesome. I still got them, but um, they were a beta product, and um, now, 
you got meta Ray-Bans and all this other stuff, all these other computer classes that surpassed it and became, Caution, know, told you. became part of everyday public life. Sometimes when you're an early adopter, you, um, you may, you, you know, there's, there's consequences, but you're kind of paving the way for other company. You're helping, you're kind of helping the industry grow and figure things out when you're an early adopter. Just like with this Chatamo adapter back here, uh, early adopter it was one of the one, first one or two people here in the United States to have one. And um, it's like, you, you know, you gotta, you gotta be, we need early adopters to help technology grow and move forward. So that that's probably, you know, I never thought of, you don't think, you just think Caution, what, told uh, you. when you're, when you get something like this, like, like an electric car, when they're new at the beginning, like I said, my first, my first one was a 2013. I was thinking when I got the 2021 Nissan, you know, fix a lot of the issues. Eh, and they really didn't. That, that, that was a major problem. I mean, I had a chance to get another car. There was a Chevy Bolt in the dealership right next door. I almost jumped on, and I probably should have. But man, Nissan makes a great little car. There's just a couple flaws that hold it back. And uh, for those of you Nissan Leaf owners out there, you know what those flaws are. And they're big ones. I'm not sure if my next car is going to be a Nissan. I'm thinking about going the Hyundai route. But that's years down the road because I still got a long time to pay this thing off. So while I'm paying this off, I have to do what I got to do. Like be an early adopter and get the Chatham or whatever working. But that, that's the main reason for the people in the comments that go, why did you get a Nissan? It's because I'm an early adopter. I like, I like, I like doing that. Sometimes it pays off. Look at the Oculus Quest, which is now the Meta Quest VR headset. Early adopter here. Now I'm on Oculus Quest 3 or Meta Quest 3. It's just like, you know, sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. Yeah, one thing I've learned is drive your EV like it's a regular gas car. Don't be afraid. Don't be frightened. Get out and explore. I know it's easy to say and hard to do, but once you start doing it a couple times, it gets a little bit easier and you get a little bit more confident in your vehicle. Electric vehicles are new. Gas powered vehicles have been around for over a hundred years. It's gonna take a little bit of time, especially when you were one of the early adopters. Don't let don't let range anxiety rule your life. I'm not going to.